Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Michael McCarville, and this is Fun with Fallen Flags, episode 58. Now, this is kind of a continuation of the previous episode, episode 57. So, I'm not going to go over all the basics that were in that. Uh, if you're curious about that, we're going to kind of skip over that, but go ahead and watch that. There's links to the Facebook group and the YouTube channel I'm going to put down in the notes of this video so you can go check those out. Uh, and feel free to subscribe if you're definitely interested in the content that we're, we're putting out. Um, okay, so episode 57, like I said, uh, covers the, the uh, retaining wall pieces. It covers the, uh, the bents, the vertical supports. And you'll notice some of these have one support, and we talked about that in the uh, previous video. The outside bents are only going to have uh, one uh, cross brace on them. So anyway, uh, episode 19 is making the footer molds for this. So again, not going to talk about it. If you guys are curious, go check out episode 19. We go through how to make a mold, how to build the master in a lot of detail. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add a bent to uh, the previous bridge that we made. Uh, it's going to have five bents on this one. This one is actually going to sit on top of, we're going to put a sill plate on the bottom of it here. So it has a kind of a footing. Uh, we're going to put this on top of this casting. And we're also going to modify this casting. We need to cut it down because it's way too long. Because if you look at it, I mean, check this out. This is uh, probably going to sit about like that. That would be a good spacing. Uh, we need to trim some of this off and then carve with a blade around this side that we carve off and then fill in that little gap with some plaster. So anyway, so we're going to do that. We're going to raise the retaining wall up to the full height, unlike the previous video, because we were trying to match what a Rio Grande Southern bridge that I found uh, photos of. So this one, we're going to we're going to raise it all the way up. So it's going to look like that when it's done. Again, these are the uh, bends that have a cross brace only on one side. So it's actually going to sit flush. So it's going to work a whole lot better. And then uh, these are just the the main beams that the track runs on. So we've got to stain that. We're also going to add these nut bolt washer castings. And I've got two different kinds. One's from Tichy, one's from Grantline. Uh, this, the, the Tichy one is a kind of an elliptical shape washer. And then the Grantline are round. So anyway, these are pretty common items to find. And we're going to use those to add a little bit more detail to the bents themselves. Paint them with a little bit of rust and they'll look great. Uh, other than that, just the uh, bare wood here we need to stain. And then the beams that the track is going to sit on, we need to stain those up so they look nice. Uh, so other than that, let's get started. First step is we're going to complete these just like we did in episode 57. We'll get those done. And then we're going to glue these guys on top here and uh, make them flush on the top. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to drill out all of these and put the nut bolt wash nut bolt washer castings uh, in the holes and paint those. So let's go ahead and get all that done, and then we'll start talking about the next step. Okay, at this point, we've added over 50 of these nut bolt washer castings to the bents. This is actually an, uh, one of the end ones. So there's going to be a retaining wall behind that. But the center ones had 14 apiece on them. So quite a few, very labor-intensive process, uh, drill out the holes, put a little bit of glue. I actually went with uh, tight bond glue on this just because I need something to, to adhere to. But they were pressed in place to the point where um, the wood is actually holding it in place. So really simple. Uh, you could use super glue if you had a uh, syringe or something to put a very small amount, but you can see the tight bond actually dries pretty clear, especially if you wipe it off as soon as it's uh, if you put it in. So anyway, um, those look great, but you really need a, a close-up to see these because they're pretty small. Okay, so that's the end pieces. So let's talk about the rest. Okay, so uh, the two support pieces for the track, those are have been stained, so those are done. 
We'll attach everything to those. The end pieces, as you saw, have the nut bolt washer pieces uh, glued to them. I know it's hard, kind of hard to see, but uh, so these two pieces are done. These are, let me do it this way. These are the next ones in, and they're just going to sit on the dirt. And we'll get ground cover and gravel and sand and stuff to cover that. This piece is our next project. So this cast footer, and again, refer to an earlier video for this, but this cast footer looks great, but it is too large. So what we're going to do is we are going to slice the plaster casting down, then remove that section toss it, then um, I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and carve the end, the new end, with uh, cut stone type uh, markings. And then I'll still want to fill in the gap that's at the very top to match the gap on, to match the uh, end like this. You can see the, the blocks go all the way to the top. Well, there'll be a little gap here, so we're going to get one of these pieces, and we're just going to uh, glue that in place. Once that's all done, we'll take a look at it, see if we like it, and then we're going to start working on staining this so it actually looks like blocks. So let's get that done. Okay, at this point, this is probably the messiest part of the project. So again, we're going to build a base for this out of a casting that we built in a previous episode. So I made a little mark here. The footer of the, the sill of this bent is going to sit inside this little recess. And I chose to keep this side. The casting actually looked a little bit better. Uh, and then I marked about how much space we want to retain. So now we're going to cut into it. So we know how much space we need. And I'm going to try to do this down a group of blocks so it looks like it's, you know, the halfway mark. And I'm just taking a razor saw and just cutting the plaster casting just straight up and down as good as I can. Just take it slow. I don't want to crack it. Almost done. So much for not cracking it. Hmm. All right. So at this point, we're going to just tidy up the end. And it's just a plaster casting. So we can carve on it pretty easily. There. And that's all it took to just square it up. Next, we want to make sure that the, the lines go through it. So we're going to just carve a few simple lines on the end. Keep in mind this doesn't have to be exact. This is going to be the side that is not seen. This is going to be the side facing away from the edge of the of the layout. So we can kind of have a little bit of liberty with what we do here. Like I said, we chose the other side intentionally. Just carving some simple block lines. And these are rough cut blocks too. That's going to be the footer for this trestle. So then I have to be pretty. All right. So now we're going to make lines here where this each of the blocks separate. Just 
stagger it for the next course down. And then the last piece is I'm going to go get, and that's, that's, I mean, literally that's all it took to create block lines. Get them nice and deep so they add to a little shading when we get it done. Oops. Got a little sideways on that, but that's okay. We'll just file it down a little bit and it'll look fine. Okay, so that's done. I mean, that's literally all I was trying to do. So now we're going to take a little piece of plaster and I'm going to put it in this space here and use just a little bit of glue because I don't want it to affect the staining of that block but once that's done then we have a footer for this so I'm going to go ahead and fix that I'm going to clean up a couple of the other block lines that are in here and then we will get to staining okay the casting is all cleaned up and I painted a few of the um, just random blocks on here. Uh, I'm going to wash it with a second coat, but I wanted to get some kind of tonal variety in the blocks that we have. So I also glued the bents to the supports and kind of give you an idea what it's going to look like here shortly. Like that. So it's going to kind of teeter tatter. So I'm going to put a couple little supports on the back here as well on the back of these uh, retaining walls just so that they hold the thing up so it doesn't quite teeter-totter so much. It'll make mounting it to layout easier um, plus it'll make it sit on a shelf um, pretty stable too. So I'm going to go ahead and finish washing this with a earth tone and once that's done I'll glue this on and then we'll wrap it up, take a final look. Uh, I've got some stills up where you can take a look at each side. And uh, again, it's pretty much just the darker stones treated and then the whole thing washed with a uh, testers enamel paint that's thinned. And then I've added just some uh, India ink uh, wash kind of a pin wash into each of the cracks so it's very time consuming but the look looks pretty good so um, got my Walther's goo here ready to glue the footer on it's gonna go in the center here but um, just to make sure that this thing doesn't teeter-totter I also built up the ends with just some blocks and these are all gonna be buried mostly this is just to make it a lot easier to actually mount to the railroad and so that the um, center support just doesn't get destroyed by um, being the lowest thing that's out there until I actually get it mounted. So right now it mounts pretty well. Um, and I'm going to glue this on and then I'll take a couple of stills and that's it for this project really. Now if you want to see how I made the casting again, that was episode 19. So take a look at that. So let me glue this on and we'll uh, take some final stills. Okay guys, that's going to do it for this project. I uh, threw a couple of still shots up here so you can take a look at what the uh, finished trestle looks like. Now um, you know that we started with a 40 foot and then we went to a 60 foot and we add complexity along the way. And I'm not done, we're going to do some more. I'm going to add a little bit more complexity on the next one, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But before that, I want you guys to uh, think about subscribing or joining the Facebook group, and uh, that way you're going to get notified when it comes out. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. This is Michael McCarroll for Fun with Fallen Flags, and I'm going to exit with some video of this because, you know, we built a trestle, we got to test it. So we're going to run the Blackstone engine across it and see how it holds up. So once again, thanks you guys for watching and enjoy.